Hello there. Um, just a quick, just a quick one, a quick roundup because I haven't done one for this evening or for tonight, and you're probably wondering where it is. Well, to be honest, I completely forgot about it. I got so involved with the other thing I was doing, the other video I did, that I forgot to give you your roundup. So, just quickly, we know that there's fifteen thousand prisoners released um, from prison. Um, to stop the spread of the coronavirus. They reckon that nine more prisoners have died, 107 convicts and 19 staff have been infected with the virus. So what better way is there than to send out inmates who have been tested with the virus or who have been quarantined with people with the virus out on our streets. What is the point of telling people to exercise social distance, to stay in their homes, when the, the prison officers are being given travel warrants to drive all the way around, goodness knows where, to their homes? The poor bus drivers, the train, the passengers that are on the train, the passengers that are on the bus, what about them? Where is the country's responsibility to the people? They're saying, some of the police officers are saying they can't do anything about some of them because they were due to be released. But if they're due to be released, take them home in a van so they're not contaminating anyone. What's the point? You're, you're kind of um, trying to protect people with the one hand and then you're throwing us all in the deep end on the other where is the logic with that? 15,000. Now, the irony is that in 2008 or 2007, they sent out 15,000 um, prisoners before. I didn't know that. I don't remember seeing an influx of prisoners all over our streets, but apparently they did the same thing because of overcrowding. Anyway, let me read my notes, otherwise I'm going to miss stuff. Okay, so the Mail Online, that was the 7th of the 4th. They're the ones that said nine prisoners have died across the UK, 107 convicts and 19 st um, prison staff have been infected. Only low-risk inmates will be granted early release by the government. And by early release, I think they were due out anyway within two to three months. But 15,000 and, you know, they're just putting them out on their on the streets. I wonder if where they're going knows that they are coming out. I wonder if where they're going have any space to put them. And if they don't, where are they going? Are they going to be walking the streets, interacting with people, spreading the virus even further? So, Jails Minister David Hansen admitted the emergency measure meant that of the total to be released, 14,800 were violent. Now, why would you say that? Seriously. Why would you say that? Why would you say 14,800 prisoners that you're sending on the streets are violent? Is it to justify violence happening over the next few months or whenever it's going to happen. I mean, I don't understand why you would tell people that. I mean, as if people haven't got enough to worry about, not having a job, not being able to work, not having much money. You know, we don't know what kind of um, pressures they're under with their family, waiting in line for a, a, a million um Universal credit claimers, claimants, you're behind them in line. And then on top of that, you're telling these people who are already stressed, oh, we're sending out 14,800 inmates. We don't know how many of them have got the coronavirus, but they have been mixing with people who've got the coronavirus. In fact, some of them were quarantined with people with the coronavirus. So you've got violent people, allegedly who have been released early because um, in the jails it's not safe, the, the other inmates are not safe, and the um, 
prison guards. The thing is, in Iran, they released 59,000 inmates for the same reason. But at least they tested them all and they were all negative before they sent them on the streets. And that is, how many times more? It must be about four times more than the UK has released. So why couldn't the UK do the good, the right thing and test them before they release them on the streets? And if they did have the virus, put them somewhere else. You've got places to put them. We know you have because you've told us. You've got places all over the UK. So why would you release them into the community when you are meant to be um, detaining people who have the virus? Now, you've told us that the police have the powers to detain and isolate anyone who has the virus. So why couldn't you save them the extra work when, instead of releasing them from jail, test the ones who... Um, test them all to see who's got it and who hasn't. And the ones who have got it, send them into that detention or isolation area that you say that you have. No matter, the more I look into this, the more it doesn't make any sense at all how they're behaving. They're behaving as though they don't have any sense, no, no kind of policy to follow. No, it, it's almost like they haven't given it any forethought at all. It's like everything is totally reactionary and they're not being strategic and they're not thinking of the consequences. You want to keep your people safe. You want to keep your country safe. Well, keep them safe by not by releasing 15,000, but by making sure those 15,000, if you are releasing them, prove negative, test negative for the virus. And then at least, OK, we've got one thing to worry about. They're, 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 they're allegedly violent. or well, that's what they went into jail for anyway. And now, not only that, they're not only violent, but they could have the virus. Why don't you just pour everything on top of us? Why don't you? Just pour everything on top of us and let us all, you know, sink in the sand. Honestly. Anyway, the most serious attackers are not eligible for early release. I wonder when they are eligible. So that is that one. Let me see what else I've got here. I was just wondering, if those people that die in jail, who's responsible for them? I would, I would expect the government. When they die on the street, who's responsible for them? That's what I'm wondering, because just suppose, wouldn't the government still be responsible for them? I mean, if these people end up homeless and they're on the streets and they die, I just don't understand the logic. I, I, I don't understand the logic. It's just like they're shifting. They're just shifting the burden somewhere else. They're not resolving anything. They're just shifting and moving the goalposts. That's what it looks like to me. So according to the Mirror, 36,000 criminals have been free, 80, freed 18 days early. So we don't even know. Well, I guess if you're isolating, you're not going to know, are you? Um, we're so preoccupied with the coronavirus. So if it doesn't kill you, these violent criminals that have got coronavirus will. Like I said, Iran temporarily freeze, temporarily freeze. And to be honest, these prisoners that they are releasing, they are supposed to be temporarily. They are supposed to have tags and all sorts. I understand that the tags, they've run out of tags. <laughs> so these people are going to be running all over the place. I mean, could it get any worse? You can't make it up, can you? So anyway, Iran temporarily frees 54,000 prisoners um, to combat the spread of the virus in their crowded jails. They are allowed out after being tested negative for COVID-19 and posting bail. So somebody's also had to post bail for them. And they also have to be tested negative. You see how responsible 
see how responsible they are. I wonder, well, I've already said that. So the Guardian states that the discharged prisoners who have either tested positive for COVID-19 or shown symptoms of the illness have been given travel warrants to use public transport to return to their homes. <sighs> anyway, let's change the subject. That is just too depressing. New process for the universal credit. This might be a good news to some of you. So once you've um, done your application online, you don't have to call them um, to find out if it's gone through OK and all that stuff. What they're saying now is that once you've done the application online, they'll, o they'll only call you if there's something wrong with it. So if they don't call you, you can assume that everything is OK and they don't have any queries. I think that is a bit more reassuring. Um, they have employed 10,000 staff, which is fantastic. The thought of dealing with people as opposed to machines is really reassuring, especially now. So, um, yeah, and that's since the 16th, well, since 16th of March, 1 million new claims for the United, for Universal Credit. And like I said, 10,000 staff redeployed. So, on another subject, banks have been blocking online shoppers. You know, like, they've been telling people to go online, especially the elderly and do your shopping online. You mustn't go out um, up and down. Well, um, some elderly or vulnerable shoppers have started using their cards to buy online and they've been doing all their shopping and putting all in the basket and then going to order it. When they're ready to pay for it now, isn't the bank blocking them, blocking their purchase? And you know, if the bank um, blocks your purchase, it cancels the order and you have to start all over again. And some of those items might not even be available. So you can imagine how frustrating it is. The banks are saying they've been doing it because it's to curb fraud. But you must use your common sense. Honestly, if it's just shopping. You know, it's different if they're going out and buying a big TV or, you know, speakers or a car or something. But these people are doing ordinary shopping and they must know in this kind of circumstance. I mean, yes, have a limit, not unless these people are spending hundreds on their shopping. Well, then, yes, of course, it should raise an alarm. But if it's just if it's under 50 pounds and it's in a regular grocery shop, you know, but I guess they have to be careful. On the one hand, it can be good. On the other hand, it can be bloody annoying. So what else? Do as I say, not do as I do. Cabinet Minister Robert Jenrick, he's the housing secretary. He visited his parents who during the lockdown who live 40 miles away. I wonder if he was fined 30 quid or 60 quid. But, oh, no. He says he went there to deliver food and prescriptions and left them outside. And if that's the case, he is allowed. So because they're vulnerable, there's no way of them, um, they're self-isolating. It's the only way they could get their stuff. So we can't have a go at him, can we? That's all for now for the Roundup. And I hope you all have a wonderful bank holiday break. Yeah, you can see all the shops, you know, they're all... You know, all the shelves are stocked up again. I'll tell you something, um, I'm so facetious, but honestly, I can't help thinking that all of this is just to make people spend over Easter, lull them into a false sense of security. Um, after Easter, because they know they want people to spend money, don't they, over the holidays. After Easter, why not pull the rug out of your, underneath their feet and... Um, we go back into the serious lockdown and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I want to believe that everything is going to be OK. Everything is going to get back to normal by the end of May. They've extended it now to the end of May. I want to believe that by June, everything is going to be back to normal. But who knows? We don't know. Nobody knows.